had just started the argon diagram and I gave you one, two and three, wasn't it? Okay, page 15, one, two and three. Does anyone need any one of those done? Can you do three, five, three? Three, five, three, no problem. Three, five, three is one divided by Z, one. No. Yeah, it's regarding, yeah. One divided by Z1, so Z1 is equal to 3 minus I. So it's 1 divided by 3 minus I, it's a division. So you multiply above and below by the conjugate of what's below. So what's the conjugate of what's below? 3 plus I. So you multiply above by 3 plus I and below by 3 plus I. So above the line you're just multiplying 1, multiply by 3 plus I. Below the line, you're multiplying 3 minus i by 3 plus i. So above the line, you'll end up with 3 plus i. Below the line, multiplying out, you get 3 threes are 9, plus 3i, minus 3i, minus i squared. I'm going to change that to a minus 1. So that would be 3 plus i above the line, and I have a 9. Plus 3i minus 3i gone, that becomes a plus 1 because it's minus minus 1. So it's 3 plus i over 10, which is 3 tenths plus 3 tenths i. Okay, so when you're plotting it, it's across 3 tenths. So 1 is there, it's across 3 tenths of 3 tenths, be about there somewhere. Is that right? Okay. Questions? Anything else from last night? Yeah. Sorry? Oh, sorry, that should be one tenth, shouldn't it? Apologies. Right, there's a one in front there, so it's across three tenths of one tenth. Apologies. Yeah. Right. Any other questions from last night? Okay, ready to move on, so? Right. So I want to do the modulus of a complex number, same section. Right, okay. So what the modulus means is the distance from the origin to the point, okay? So we were just drawn complex numbers, so if you drew one out there, the modulus is the length of that line, right? Okay, so the modulus is, is the length of the line to the origin, right? If you drew your complex number, it was out here somewhere, it would be the length of that line. So what modulus is the distance from the origin to the point, okay? We could do this before, we could just use the distance formula, okay, and that's in effect what you're doing, okay, it's just a shortcut, right, so there's a formula, it's just a shortcut, but you're actually using the distance formula from 3, 4 to naught, naught, or from minus 2, minus 1 to naught, naught, okay, and this is the shortcut, okay, so it's a formula, it's not in the log table, <coughs> So the formula is not in the log table, so you need to learn it, okay? But if you don't learn it, you can just use the distance formula and the complex number as a point and the zero, zero, right? Okay, so your answer is just going to be a number because it's the length of a line. So modulus is the length of a line. And how they indicate it is, it's the Z, right, whatever the complex number is, with two straight lines either side of it, okay? So two straight lines to either side of it means find the modulus, which is find the distance from this point to the origin. Here's the formula, and I'll explain what the formula means in one sec when you're ready to listen. Which bit, Eve? And I'll call it out. Just that it's z equals a plus b. Z equals a plus b i, that bit? Oh, yeah, b i. Yeah, a plus b i. Right.
Right, so the formula for the modulus is, and remember the modulus is just a number, there's no y in it, right? It's just a number because it's the length of a line. It's the length of the line joining the origin to that point, right? And the formula is a squared plus b squared. Basically, it's just a, a simplified version of the distance formula. It's a shortcut, right? Okay, for example, right, if I asked you to find the modulus of this complex number, minus 2 minus 4i, right? So minus 2 minus 4i, you don't need to draw it, okay? But minus 2 minus 4i would be across to minus 2 down to minus 4. There, you're basically getting the length of that line. So that's what they're asking you to find the length of that line. You don't need to draw it, okay? All you have to do is fill in the formula. This formula is not in the log tables. You need to remember it, right? So A is the real number, and B is the number in front of I. Do not take the I, okay? Biggest mistake people make is they put the I into the formula. It's just the number in front of the I. So <coughs> this one is the square root of minus 2 to be squared. So A is minus 2. And b is minus 4 to be squared into the calculator. Press equals, that would be 4 plus 16, which is root 20, which is 2 root 5. Second example there, get the modulus, two straight lines either side of the number means get the modulus. Let's find the distance from this point to the origin. The formula is the square root of a squared plus b squared. So a is the real bit and b is the number in front of i. Not the i, just the number in front of i. So it's minus 3 to b squared plus 1 to b squared. There's a 1 understood to be in front of that i into the calculator, press equals, that's root 10. Is that okay? Modulus? Easy? Yeah? Okay. Just, um, if you do forget, now you don't need to write this down, right, okay, but just, yeah, just in case you did forget the, um, mod how to get the modulus, right, okay, if it was minus, minus 3 plus i, right, Basically, that's the distance from the point minus 3, 1 to the point 0, 0. Okay, so you could use the distance formula. x2 minus x1 to be squared plus y2 minus y1 to be squared. x1, y1, x2, y2, fill it in, get the same answer. Okay, so that's all the modulus formula is, is it's a shortened down version for that because one of the points is always not not. Okay, that's all it is. Is that okay? But as I say, if you want to use it, you need to remember it. It's not in the log table. Okay, we good with modulus? Can I move on? Right, that's that whole, uh, that's section 1.4 done. I'll give you some exercises on that tonight. I'm moving on, if that's okay. Right, the next thing is transformations of complex numbers. These are, there's a bit of talking in them, a bit of uh, whatever, but the questions in them are really quite simple. Okay, so don't sweat this bit is what I'm saying. Right, okay. So transformations of a complex numbers, that it means what happens when you move them around. Okay, so what happens when you move them around. Right, and the first transformation is you multiply a complex number by a real number. As in here, you're multiplying the complex number 2 plus 3i, you're multiplying it by 2. What happens on the plane, right? What happens in the diagram? What happens to the complex number? Here, same number, you're multiplying it by minus 2, right? So you're still multiplying it by a real number. Here, you're multiplying it by a fraction, okay? So we're just going to look at what happens when you multiply by a real number. What happens to the complex number? So it's just what happens on the diagram. Where does it move to? Where does the where's where did you start? Where's the answer? Right, what happened? 
that's basically what this is about. Okay. Say that again. Two plus three i, yeah. They're all in the bracket. It's always two plus three i. Okay. Sorry, I need to. Okay. I'm starting with two plus three i. The first thing I'm going to do is multiply two plus three i by two. Multiply into the brackets, and the answer would be. 4 plus 6i, agreed? Okay, so 4 plus 6i is across 4 up to 6. It's now here somewhere. Okay, so look what happens. So there's where the original complex number was. Right, the image has now moved out to here. Right, so the image has moved out to here. It's still on the same line. Okay, it's just farther from the origin. Would you agree? It's still on the same line. Well, it should be if I do it accurately, right? It's still on the same line. It's just farther from the origin. Agreed? Guess how much farther it is from the origin. You multiply it by two, so it's now twice as far from the origin. Is that okay? If you multiply it by three, it would be way up here, and it would be still on the same line, but it would be three times as far from the origin. Okay? Right, if you multiply it by five, it'd be still on the same line, but it'd be five times away from, five times as far from the origin as when it started. With me? Okay, if I multiplied it by minus two, right? So if I multiplied it by minus two, the answer is going to be minus four minus six i. I didn't think this through. Right, so the answer is minus 4 minus 6i. So it's still on the same line. That's supposed to be a straight line. It's still on the same line. It's still twice as far from the origin now because you multiplied it by 2. But it's now in the opposite direction. So when you multiply by a minus number, it still doubles it or triples its distance from the origin. But if there's a minus, it's in the opposite direction. So it's straight across, right? Okay, by right, that should be a perfectly straight line all the way through. Is that all right? Okay, so when you multiply by minus two, you double its distance from the origin again, right? But the minus means you put it in the opposite direction. Yes? Um, is the origin two plus zero? No, the origin is zero, zero, okay. right? So, um, two plus three i, is if you got the modulus of that, it would be the square root of 13. And if you got the modulus of this, it would be two times the square root of 13. Right, okay. So the, it's now twice as far from the origin. It's on the same line, right, okay. But um, two means it's twice as far from naught naught. And the minus two means it's twice as far as it started from not naught. So this one was this far from not naught. Now it's twice as far from not naught, right? But it's in the opposite direction because of that minus. Okay, is that right? So the origin is not naught, sorry. Okay, right? A half. So if I just multiply by a half, two plus, same starting point. So I'm starting on two plus three i again. So I have the same starting point Right, that's 1 plus 1.5i, agreed? So that's across 1, up 1.5. Guess what? It's on the same line, but it's what? Half as far from the origin, right? So the distance to the origin has halved, right? If it was minus a half, it would be over here. The distance would be half as far, but it'd be in the opposite direction, okay? Right? So everything I just said there is written in words now. Okay, can I lend it up? Right. So whatever complex number you're starting at, then if you multiply the complex number by A, where A is a real number, so that's AE slash 
So you're just multiplying Z by A, where A is a real number, right? Okay, so I'll just put A as an element of R. So A is any real number, right? Okay, so a real number, everything's a real number, so you can multiply by anything, right? If two straight lines means the positive value of A is greater than 1, then you're stretching it, as in, in our first example, it was greater than 1, it was 2. So we stretched it, we made it twice as far from the origin. We extended it out, right? If A, the number you're multiplying by, is less than 1, you squashed it nearer the um, origin, so that's called contraction, right? Okay? And if A is less than odd, as in if A was negative, right? We stretched or contracted it in the opposite direction, okay? So these are just kind of both words. Stretch, contract, right, okay? Yes? Uh, because I want A to be negative in part 3. Here, it didn't matter whether it was positive or negative, because if it was minus 2, it instead made it twice as far, right? If it was minus a half, it would still make it half as far, it'd just be in the opposite direction. So this one, I didn't mind what signs these were, they can be plus or minus, but this one, I definitely wanted it to be minus, because I wanted it to be in the opposite direction, never finish the sentence, obviously got distracted. Stretched or contracted in the opposite direction. Okay, as I say, don't don't sweat that too much, right? Okay, so you're just moving it out twice as far from the origin, or three times as far from the origin, or half as far from the origin, and if it's a minus, it's on the same line, it's just in the opposite direction. So if it's minus a half, it's half as far from the origin, but it's gone the opposite direction. Okay? Is that right? That's the first transformation of complex numbers. Right? The second transformation of complex numbers is if you take one complex number and you add another complex number to it, what happens? Okay? So if you take one complex number and you add another complex number to it, what happens? Uh, can I go? Right, we good? Right. Okay, so if you add complex numbers, so if you take a complex number and you add another complex number to it. And I took three complex numbers because I just want to show you what happens. Okay, so three complex numbers, I took three plus two i, one, so three plus two i is starts here. One plus four i is across one up to four. And 2 minus 2i is across to 2, down to minus 2. They are my three starting points. And I'm just going to draw, join them together to make a triangle. Because I just want to show you what happens to the starting points if you add the same complex number to each one. So I just said, I'm going to add minus 2 plus 3i. Okay, so I'm going to add minus 2 plus 3i to each one. So remember, to add complex numbers, you add the real bits and you add the, 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 add the real bits and add the imaginary bits. So here, 3 minus 2 would be 1, and 2i and 3i would be 1 plus 5i. Okay? So that's going to go to 1, 5. So that number is gone to there. Okay? The next one is, uh, again, I'm going to add the same complex number to it. So I'm adding the real bits and the imaginary bits. So 1 minus 2 is minus 1, and 4i and 3i makes 7i. So that complex number goes to minus 1 plus 7i, which is up there. Okay. And the last complex number I started with, and I'm going to add the same complex number to it. So it's 2 minus 2 is 0. 
right, and minus 2i plus 3i is plus i. So that's the point, is zero, my, zero, 1. So 0, 1 would be up there. Okay, right? So there's my new, where my three new complex numbers went to. And what, what would that be? I basically picked up this shape, didn't I, and moved it. What is that? It's a translation, isn't it? You know, when you pick up a shape and you just move it. You don't rotate it, you don't turn it backwards, you don't turn it upside down. You just pick it up and you move it to a new spot. That's called a translation. So when you add complex numbers, you're actually doing a translation. You're picking it up and you're moving it. Okay? And again, don't sweat it. When you see the questions, you'll see they're quite straightforward for you. Okay? So adding one complex number to another, you're actually doing a translation. You're picking up your original point and you're moving it to a different spot. Okay? So the first one, when you multiply just by a real number, you stretched it or contracted it. Right? When you add a whole complex number to a complex number, you pick it up and you move it. Okay? Ready for the next one? Right. The next one, can I go... No one's screaming at me. If you want to multiply a complex number by i, what happens when you multiply by i, right? So when you multiply by i, girls, you actually rotate the complex number anti-clockwise about the origin by 90 degrees. That sounds way more complicated than it is, right? So I just leave you write it down and then look at my diagram to talk about it. Origin, is that it? Yeah, I could see by looking at it that it was uh, that says the origin. Remember, the origin is not not the point not not. So, if I start with the point four plus i, that's point four one. Agreed, right? Okay, and I multiply that number by i. So I'm going to multiply 4 plus i by i. So I want to multiply 4 plus i by i and see what happens it. Okay, so when I multiply by i, I get 4i plus i squared. And the minute you see an i squared, you replace it with minus 1. So that's 4i minus 1 for the plotting, the real bit should be first, so that's minus 1 plus 4i. Just wrote it backwards. Okay? Is that alright? So when I plot that, it's minus 1 plus 4i. So this is where I started. This is where I finished. Right? Okay? And basically, what, what I just did was I rotated it anti-clockwise. Anti-clockwise means around this way. So I rotated it this way by 90 degrees about the origin so that just means if I join each one to the origin
the angle at the origin is going to be what? See this angle here? It's going to be 90 degrees. Okay? So if you rotate by I, or if you multiply by I, you're move, rotating it about the origin by 90 degrees. Right? You just need to remember that. Okay? You just need to remember it. Guess what? If you multiply it by I squared, as in if you multiply it by I, and multiply it by I again, what, how many degrees would you have rotated it? 180. If you multiply it by I to the power of 3, so you've multiplied it by I three times, how many times, how, how many degrees have you rotated it by? 270. If you multiplied it by I to the power of 4, what have you rotated it by? 360, so you're actually back to where you started, aren't you? Okay, so if I rotated that again, it would be over here. If I rotated it again, it would be down here. And if I rotated it again, it'd be back to where I started. Okay, so every time you multiply by an I, you've rotated it. Okay, by 90 degrees. Got it? Right, that's all you need to remember from that whole bit. So, and finally, the last one is, right, if you multiply complex numbers, if you multiply two complex numbers together, what actually happens? Right? So I'm going to multiply 2 plus i by 3 plus i. So I'm going to start at 3 plus i, and I'm going to see what happens it, right? when I multiply by 2 plus i. Well, actually, I'm going to go the other way around. I'm going to start with 2 plus i, because that's what the writing says. I'm going to start with 2 plus i, and I'm going to multiply by 3 plus i. See that AC, that stands for anti-clockwise. Anti-clockwise, that AC there, right, stands for. So my starting point is two plus I, right? And I want to multiply it by 3 plus i and see where it goes, right, okay? So I want to multiply by 3 plus i, see what happens. So in number one, I rotated it by, or I multiplied it by three. In number three, I multiplied it by i. Now I'm putting them both together and seeing, well, what if I, what if I multiply by three and plus i at the same time? What happens? When you multiply by three, what happens? You get the stretching, don't you? And when you multiply it by i, what happens? Rotates by 90 degrees. So it's going to move three times away from the origin and it's going to rotate by 90 degrees. That's what's going to happen, okay? So just multiply it out to see where it ends up and then we'll talk about it. So, so you're multiplying it by three and then you're multiplying it by i. So that would be six plus three i plus two i plus i squared. I'm going to replace that i squared with a minus 1. So that would be 6 minus 1 is 5. So it would be 5 plus 5i is where I end up. Is that okay? Right, okay. So 5 plus 5i is where I've ended up, okay, and how is that rotated 90 degrees? Right, it was there. It's definitely three times from the origin, right? How it's rotated 90 degrees now is confusing me, right? Look, just go with it and I'll come back to it on Monday. Right, go with it. It's, so multiplying by 3 plus i, it stretches it. Multiplying by 3 stretches it and multiplying by i rotates at 90 degrees. 
Now I will, that's not multiplied by 90 degrees, so I just have to come back to it. Is that all right? Okay, because I've confused myself there. Okay, um, the questions aren't too bad at all, so we're going to do page 15, just a few modulus questions. So 15, we're going to um, do, uh, where are the modulus? Um, seven, eight, and nine. They're modulus questions. And then on the next page, we'll do a few of these and you'll see they're not bad at all. Page 20, and let's do, one to six. Do you want photos? Yeah. yeah. Right, okay.